Hi everyone, it's Claire here and today my video is all about how to upcycle fabrics you already have at home to create great cloth pads on a budget. Now you might be coming to upcycling because of budget restrictions and it's a great way to be able to get into cloth pads without spending a huge amount of money trying to get a stash together because you can make your own. Upcycling is also great if you are very, very eco-conscious and you don't want to invest in new fabrics from factories, etc. So you'd prefer to use your fabrics at home. And another great reason to upcycle, which is something I always say to any of my friends or anyone who asks me about starting to sew cloth pads, I recommend upcycling things from around your home to start off with until you practice your pad making skills because there's no getting away from the fact that especially core fabrics for your cloth pads if you want to invest in Zorb, Bamboo Fleece, Hemp, any of these great cores, they are quite expensive. So it is an investment to get yourself going and the last thing you want to do is invest in these great fabrics, get half a metre or a metre of each, and then be really disappointed because obviously your first few pads, unless you're absolutely awesome seamstress, are going to come out a bit wonky. You could have some wings too short issues. Your pattern may not be right for you and you discover actually you need three inches longer or three inches shorter. There's a lot of experimentation when you first start sewing cloth pads so by upcycling with what you have around your house you're making free pads with the exception of your thread and if they are not suitable for you or if the wings don't join together or if you suddenly are stitching and your core is so unbelievably wonky it doesn't matter because you've lost nothing but you've gained experience and you'll be surprised how as you go along, your cloth pads improve. So that's a bit about the reasons why you might come to upcycling. Now what can you use? Toppers. Some people I've spoken to when I say about upcycling get a bit disappointed and be like, oh, I don't want to upcycle because I want pretty pads. And, you know, if I use a flannel sheet or something, that's not going to look pretty. I have some amazing things here. These are all things that no longer fit me or have holes in or stains or whatever that I set aside for upcycling for myself. Even though I have all the new materials now, I still can't resist, especially when it comes to pyjamas. So let's talk pyjamas. Top fabrics, upcycling, pyjamas are a must. It, maybe it's night dresses you have, maybe it's pyjama shorts, pyjama bottoms, pyjama tops. They are awesome toppers and you can still have your fab cute prints. So for example, this here is a jersey pair of PJ bottoms. These have a massive hole in the seam now, so they're not suitable for wearing around the house. They're actually pastel pink, but it looks kind of white on here with stars it's 95% cotton 5% lycra so just like the jerseys you'll see online and it is an awesome cool topper to have on your pads it'll keep you nice and cool in summer they've been washed a lot like with all of your upcycled things um, so they're going to be very absorbent a quick note here before I forget to mention it later if you have used softener for all your washing, then you will need to do a quick prep wash with your fabric. If you don't use softener, you can cut and stitch straight away. If you have used softener quite a bit, I recommend a hot wash on 60 with a cap or two of vinegar and that will strip any softener off them and have them prepped and ready to go. So that's a cotton pair of pajama bottoms. These I can't wait to turn into pads. These are also pyjama bottoms and they're the same fabric makeup as those ones. How cute of a pad 
is this going to make? So don't think because you're upcycling, you can't have cute because it could be your pajama bottoms, kids' pajama bottoms, they've grown out of them, they've stained them. There's definitely probably some fabric you can salvage in there. Definitely, probably. That's a bit of a weird sentence, but we'll go with it. Um, so definitely look at your kids' clothes, T-shirts, dresses, anything they're growing out of that you probably wouldn't give to the charity shop, you can use for your upcycling. Then flannel pajamas. Look at these. These are just the cutest. Oh, my goodness. I want to sew with this right now. I love it. Love, love, love. Now, not only can you use flannel pajamas as your topper, you can also cut this up and use it as your core as well, as flannel is an excellent core material. Other things you can use as toppers are old t-shirts, you, your partners, again, kids, anyone's old t-shirts that you have laying around the house, pretty much any kind of clothing that's cotton based or if you're fine with polyester, polyester based t-shirts, etc. will be perfect as a topper. Okay, so then we get to cores. Now, this is what I think is probably the most important part because as much as we like cute, you want them to work if you're going to upcycle. So again, this pair of pyjamas is 100% cotton flannel, so can definitely be used as your core. Toweling. Now, this is an old towel that's got tons of catches in because I think it's just like all that time dryers and washing um, that we set aside for if there's an emergency animal spill or DIY, that sort of thing. You can use this as a core. It is very absorbent because you have washed and washed and washed them. And it's great for one layer in a liner, for example. Oh, God, that's Ellen joining us. Um, a couple of layers for a regular. So it's great for that. If you need to make heavies and overnights, the only downside I would say to using toweling is that it can be quite thick and therefore make quite a thick stiff pad so you can get around that if you have some flannel pajamas like we just saw this is an old stained flannel pillowcase you may have some flannel sheets in your house all of this stuff is great for cores you can do completely flannel cores which will keep your pads reasonably thin so if you want to do heavies you're looking at six to eight layers for example so you're still going to have a reasonably thin pad or you can use it in combination with your toweling and put a layer of toweling in between a couple of layers of flannel and do some sandwiching that way so they're probably the two fabrics you're most likely to have in your house available to make your cores another one you could have ellen play in a minute please is Ellen. Ellen. Sorry about that. Ellen found a receipt that she wanted to play with and then Daisy wanted to take it from her. Drama ensued. It's as bad as having children having cats, I can tell you that. So, back to the task at hand. These are a um, cotton bamboo mix jogging bottom, pyjama bottom type thing that I have. And... They are extremely bobbled and worn now on the outside. The inside is actually fluffy. Um, stuff like this, some jogging bottoms are cotton-based and natural fibre-based and will be absorbent. So they are great if you have particularly heavy periods, you want to use them for night pads, that sort of thing. You can also use this as a topper if you don't mind the bobbly side up. Um, you will want to water test this to check that it is absorbent. With all your fabrics, unless they're cotton or flannel, then you want to do a quick water test before using just to check them out. And we'll cover that now in backer fabrics. So backer fabrics around the house is most likely going to be um, dressing gowns. If you've got a fleece dressing gown, fleecy zip-up tops, hoodies, that sort of thing that you, your partner, kids may have. Um, that, 
from here. Um, that is similar, if you like, in effect to buying anti-peel fleece. So you want to water test it. So what you'll do is you'll pop your fabric down on the table, get a cup of water, and then put your fingers in and blip water all over the fabric. Now, if it is water resistant, then it will bead onto the fabric and sit on top of the fabric. That is a good backer. Um, if you bead water on any of the fabrics you're trying and it sinks straight in, then that is more of a topper or a core fabric. You only want to use water resistant um, materials as your backer to prevent leaking. This is particularly important if you have heavy periods or are making night pads, because obviously you don't want to be changing every like 20 minutes or something. So this sort of thing is ideal for that. Um, if you don't have any fleecy type materials around the home, I mean, this is something I was given as a gift, but I don't actually wear polyester, which is why I have it. Um, then it may be worth doing what I did. And although I was upcycling all my toppers and my cores and my backers, I invested in a small amount of PUL, which is not too dear. It's polyurethane laminate. I actually did a video on that if you want to check that one out. Um, then you could put a layer of that inside your pad to cover the whole of the pad shape. And then on your back, you can use your flannel, you can use your cotton, you can use any of your fabrics then regardless of water resistance. However, for most people, I think you're probably going to have some form of polyester fleece in your house that you could upcycle as your backer. So you can do your pads completely free without spending any money at all. So that's pretty much it on fabrics. Don't be, some people get very disheartened because you go onto the Facebook groups, for example, or even YouTube videos, and people are making their own pads and they look really great. And then often you find people like, oh, I'm so embarrassed, I just made my first pad and look at it, or, oh, I'm so disappointed, I made my first pad and it's awful, I can't even post a picture. Don't be embarrassed because the pads you're seeing in the groups are often not people's first pads. They're posting the pads they made this week. My first pad was this one, which was an upcycled pad. Um, and as you can see, the snaps are not in the middle. The wings, I, I don't really know what's happening there. The stitching is not even. The core is stitched up here and it actually goes down here. Um, this was pyjama bottoms for the topper, by the way, and inside is toweling. So it, here's a good example of toweling. This is two layers of towel and it is like that. Um, and the back was some pyjamas. As you can see, the stitching is not good here. There's like a, a hole in the end here. So do not worry when your first pads come out like this. You may be one of the lucky people that is just unnatural and it's like, whoa, awesome. But no, most of us start off in the land of really, they're functional, they're usable. I use this pad. Um, I don't use it anymore because again, this is one of the benefits of upcycling. I realized I needed way longer than this. When I first came to cloth, I was looking at what other people were using and not really focusing on my flow and what I was going to need. So this is no good. And then sometime on, my pad started to look more like this. So as you can see, it's a lot neater and a lot improved. I never actually snapped this one because I made this one and discovered I couldn't have fleece on the back of mine so it's not even got poppers so I'll probably de-stash this at some point but your pads will improve and mine have improved again and again they don't even look like this anymore so you know don't be disheartened with your upcycling efforts and your first goes at stitching cloth pads this video has gone on a bit longer than I thought so I hope I haven't bored you to death um, if you've enjoyed this video 
please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.